Hey everyone, this is Carla. Welcome back to my channel. A few questions. Are you suffering from low confidence in your wheelchair? Do you feel like people are staring at you and can see all of your flaws? Do you think you can use some, some confidence boosting tips or tricks? If you answered yes to any of the aforementioned questions, stay tuned. This is the video for you. And if you're new here, again, this is Carla, Disabilities Influencer and Educator. Welcome to this channel. And a video is going to be linked on this screen just as a little intro to this channel formally. All right. So this is definitely a topic that I have struggled with throughout my life and everyone has their good and bad days. We're, we're all human. So I can definitely attest that uh, it's taken me a while to get to the point where I feel like I can definitely give back to other people that use a wheelchair or mobility aid in terms of confidence boosting. And I do want to say that this video is going to be focused on body positivity, feeling your best in your body while in a wheelchair or even using a mobility aid. So if talking about body image or any body issues is a triggering subject for you, then you definitely want to look at the uh, video timeline that's going to be linked in the description to skip around if need be. Proceed with caution. Now all of that is out of the way, let's get started. I'm always excited to, to talk to you all and give a little advice. <laughs> okay. This is going to be a two-part series. As I mentioned, this video is going to be focused on, on body image or the exterior. And there's going to be uh, an upcoming video talking about the power of the mind in terms of confidence. Okay, now here are a few tricks and tips to feel more confident in your wheelchair. First one is love your body and try to present the best version of yourself. So let's just talk about beauty. Beauty is a well-organized, well-designed, artistic masterpiece. And most people don't stumble into their beauty. It's something that has to be, it's a trial and error thing. And it's something that's, that takes some time and evolution of oneself. Many celebrities and fashion icons, historical icons throughout history have had some type of help, uh, whether it's uh, some type of professional help or just constant feedback from their family or the, the public at hand. But in this century, in this day and age, you viewer can have just as much help. <laughs> And, and that comes in the form of YouTube makeup tutorials, makeup uh, gurus and influencers on all types of social media platforms. So you can definitely study beauty and learn. I, there are books and auto, or there are books by some of your favorite celebrities and even some of their behind the scene glam team. I know Kim Kardashian's makeup artist has a channel and a book, um, as did Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist has his own book. So there definitely are some, those are just a few of the masters out there that help these icons become who they are. So there's definitely help out there. Uh, so I mentioned those and there's uh, there's old photographs of, of people that you can look at even though I would caution one to be careful with looking at photographs because a version of Photoshop has been around since basically pictures have been being taken so <laughs> be careful with that but anyway and if 
And another way to present the best version of yourself and loving yourself is just to identify some points of pride. I'm going to say above the neck and below the neck. So I'll, I'll start. I'll give you my pride point on, let's say, above the neck. I, I'd say I, I love my smile. I love presenting my smile and I love the effect it can have on others. So I do it quite often and it's something I'm proud of. So I would say identify those pride, pride points and accentuate them. So I do it with lipstick and other ways to accentuate the mouth. And I definitely have a video coming forthcoming about makeup. That is something forthcoming. Uh, as mentioned in my original video, uh, part of my disability does affect affect my hands. So um, I uh, I have to I definitely be creative when it comes to putting on makeup and that type of thing. And I can't wait to show you all how I do it. All right. Next, um, I'd say a pride point for me below the neck is you scoundrel. Who do you think I am? How dare you? Another part of presenting your best self are channeling the senses. So pre I just mentioned presenting the best version of yourself in terms of how you look on the outside, but you can maybe try and wear a beautiful fragrance, whether it's perfume, cologne, or even just being around a scented candle. Uh, s s smell is a sense and one that can provoke positive reactions. And another version of one that one can present themselves are their language skills or conversational skills. You can definitely try to level up your vocabulary, topics of conversation, how wonderful it is to speak to a true, well-rounded person. Someone that can talk about any topic from A to Z. Just those super cultured, super interesting, semi-mysterious people that can talk on topics from Apollo to zebras <laughs> and many things in between. So that's something that I know I strive to do and also I try to incorporate some of them SAT words in my vocabulary as well and be a gregarious person. Just in case I have, you know, just in case there are teens watching this channel, this that's for you. Some of those bigger SAT words like we're definitely going to be incorporated on this channel. Point number two on building confidence in your wheelchair. Become familiar and comfortable with your wheelchair or a mobility aid. And what does that mean? That means uh, practice, practice, practice to become comfortable so that navigating in, I'm going to say the wheelchair, becomes second nature. It's like, you know, if I'm just literally cruising down the street, minding my business, Sometimes in talking to people, they're just like, wow, you handled that thing so well. And I don't even think about it at this point because I'm just so used to, at least I can say this chair at hand. It's, as they say, it's like riding a bike. It's just something you don't forget. But, you know, I know how to hit the, you know, to control the joystick and to move and to go forward and back and uh, going in a circle or making let's say a turn you know I'm, I'm comfortable with the, those things now if I were in a really tight space it may take a little bit of practice but or you know some definite uh almost driving like skills to make sure I don't hit anything but I'm, I'm pretty comfortable and in, in terms of navigating in the chair so if you're new to a chair or the chair is uh new to you then you definitely want to have that goal of becoming confident in the chair. And what I mean by comfortable, that can also mean making sure that you're not in any pain or something isn't, let's say, maybe you've outgrown something. Um, it's a point you may wanna look into if you're not uh, physically comfortable. 
they do have something or there is something called a seating evaluation where you can be identified for pressure sores and also what's called wheelchair evaluations so if you need a new chair and you can follow up with your insurance and a physical therapist is a place to start to look into that okay next point all right in terms of confidence in the chair is making sure your chair is clean uh this these wheelchairs and mobility aids do get dirty and it's like another it's like a chair or an object it can get dust on it or food on it it's sometimes i don't know where some of the things on this chair where they even come from but i know for me i uh, I'm more confident when I know my chair is clean and fresh. Fresh and so clean is another point where I can feel not as confident when my chair isn't as clean. So it's something I definitely try and uh, and keep try and keep on top of. <laughs> Next point, point four, it would be to make. And this I've discussed this in uh, a previous video about traveling in the chair. And travel can mean short distances and long distances. A link is going to be on the screen for that video. But in summary, it's uh, definitely a confident boost when you know where you're going in terms of the accessibility of where you're going. If you're going somewhere, even if it's just down the street, but if it's somewhere new, you may want to just call just and make sure that it's, it's accessible. I know that for me, if I'm going somewhere that's inaccessible or a challenge in terms of accessibility, uh, I am not as confident and a little, a little frightened actually. You don't know what's gonna happen or you don't know who you're gonna be needing to talk to. So making sure those things are lined up in place before you go somewhere is definitely a confidence booster. Uh, and if you look, if you feel good on the inside, it'll show on the outside. Definitely. Number four, prepare for times when you're not feeling your best physically. And let's talk about that a little bit. So when you're not feeling your best, if you're having a flare up or just uh, not at your 100, but either you have to do something or doing something you think will make you feel better. I know for me, I plan to have, or I do have a few pieces of clothing in my wardrobe that I know will fit my body when, let's say, I'm in pain. If I'm having a flare-up, then I may not wear something as form-fitting or something that requires a lot of pulling, for example, pants. Well, honestly, I don't wear a lot of pants anyway, but when I do wear pants, it's definitely when I'm not feeling a shape, tip top shape. So I definitely have a few pieces in my wardrobe that that allow me to still be out and and look look good. Maybe not my best because I'm not feeling my best, but still allow me to look good. But also those clothes are my adaptive clothing as well. Uh, there and I'll, I, I mentioned a video. Or if I didn't, a video is definitely coming on wheelchair fashion, at least for me. So get ready for that. But I have some uh, garments in my wardrobe that are considered adaptive clothing. So they're a little easier and don't require as much from me physically. As I constantly mention, I am uh, a little weaker in my hands and my arms. So. I would say those uh, pre preparation in that way definitely helps me go out and be able to feel feel a little better about myself. And I would say an honorable mention on this topic would be doing some stretching and exercising, especially if you have some stretches and exercises that you have been suggested to do as a part of home care or self care. I know for me, I know for me personally, I have. Some exercises that definitely will help strengthen some parts of my body and uh, some stretching that can sort of take some of that pressure and uh, reduce those flare-ups that I mentioned when that start to make me not feel as good physically and knowing that I'm keeping up on that doing my stretching and exercising and any other recommended home care uh, suggestions either by healthcare providers doctors or physical therapists or even friends that may 
I have a friend that's really into yoga and she's definitely, we definitely talk all the time and we have some stretches that I do that definitely help me. So knowing that I'm doing that helps very much. Okay, we are almost done. I I hope you've enjoyed this content and that it, it helps you, <clears throat> and that it helps you feel better about yourself in your wheelchair or mobility aid. And the next part of the series is going to be about mental confidence, a mental boost to help with confidence in the wheelchair. All right. Well, if you in like this video or like this content, please like it so that uh, I know what, what you guys are, are enjoying and want more of. Please comment. There's a few questions that I asked throughout the video, so feel free to answer some of those questions or even ask me some questions or talk about this topic a little bit. Are you struggling with anything? Uh, do, you, do you have something you want me to talk about in the future? Definitely put that in the comments and subscribe if not to support me to show me lots of love and support this channel and help me grow this channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video is forthcoming all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much you're so brave and courageous and i applaud you and appreciate you so so much love it carpe diem the best way you can every day Goodbye. Stay tuned. Be safe.